Mustangs, they have number three, Val Saar. She's a forward, 5'10 junior. Number 11, Michaela Sadha. She's a guard, 5'10 freshman. Number 14, Bree Holliman. She's a 5'8 guard, who's a junior. Number 23, Rebecca Rowling. She's a 5'9 guard, also a junior. And number 45, Allison Nagel. She's a 6 foot 3 forward and a junior. Um, the Mustangs are coached by Allison Kruger. She's in her third season with a record of 14 and 43. She's assisted by Megan Doyle, Claire Dewilis, Micah Mim, Sam Lynn, and Caitlin Tam. Um, like I said, Allison is in her third season as the head coach of the women's basketball team. Uh, she earned her first career victory as a head coach during her second game on the bench on November 20th in a 79-59 win over Minnesota Morris. Kruger won her first NSIC game in her first attempt when SMSU defeated then Augustana 63-56 on December 3rd. Um, talking about the series history, SMSU and Sioux Falls are meeting for the 20th time tonight. SMSU leads all time 15 to 4 in a series that dates back all the way to the 1969 to 1970 season. Mustangs are 6 and 3 in the games that are played in Marshall. Very good uh, there, Brett. Also, uh, Sioux Falls, they have seven wins over uh, current NSIC teams during their NCAA uh, Division II provisional year. Now let's take a look at uh, the game from last season. These two teams played against each other on November 12th of 2011. Uh, kind of a big victory for the University of Sioux Falls. They came out with a 76 to 58 victory, uh, helped by a good first half. They outscored SMSU 41 to 22 in the first half, so that certainly uh, helped. Uh, Laura Johnson had 11 points. Uh, the high scorer of the game was Vanessa Johnson with 26 points. She, of course, graduated. For SMSU, uh, their leading scorer from last year, Abby Keneally, leading scorer from last year's game, also graduated. Uh, other than uh, Keneally last year, most of the uh, SMSU players were held quiet. But uh, this year, Bree Holloman, the big scorer, 14 or nearly 15 points per game. Uh, she's the only SMSU player in double di digits in scoring. Quite a good uh, three-point shooter as well, 15 of 34 from behind the arc. So. Uh, Mustangs, hopefully we'll have to uh, kind of, uh, she'll probably have to be the workhorse and get a lot of scoring if the uh, Mustangs want to get a chance at a victory here. Right, and just they're hoping to rebound from that game last year. Looking at what SMSU has coming in tonight's game, they have one senior, seven juniors, three sophomores, three freshmen, and nine returning lettermen. So they're hoping to put something together with this team tonight, get the big victory. They are ranked 14th out of 16th in the NSIC conference while Sioux Falls is 9 out of 16. So this would be a pretty good upset tonight. Yeah, and uh, both teams kind of coming in banged up a little bit for uh, University of Sioux Falls. Holly Egan, Alicia Bowe, Lindsey Johnson, Amber Payton, and Puala <laughs> Winentanda. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. All out for Sioux Falls and then for SMSU, Natalie Svensson, Whitney Miller, and Emily Dusky also out for the Mustangs. So both teams kind of shorthanded. Right now we're going to kind of uh, kick it out for like a two-minute break while they do uh, the national anthem. But we will be back with Mustang basketball. You are watching Mustang basketball here on KSSU TV. Southwest Minnesota State University where private school atmosphere meets public school cost. Programs like culinology, agronomy, and environmental science set the standard nationwide, where grad placement rates are over 97%. And the school invests in you, putting over $80 million back into the university. Southwest Minnesota State University, where you belong. If you've had a stroke, the chances are good that you could have another one but it doesn't have to happen. You could be a stroke smart star. I'm eating healthy and I'm exercising again. I'm keeping my blood pressure and cholesterol levels under control. After 35 years, I quit smoking. I always take my medicine. If you take steps to improve your health, you'll greatly reduce your risk of another stroke. Talk to your doctor and go to stroke.org today. 
I'm not going to have another stroke. We all have a vision of that perfect smile. But when it comes to our smile, it's not something we can draw or wait to miraculously appear. We need an orthodontist, dental specialists with two to three years of specialized education beyond dental school. Your child might be the next Picasso, so trust that brilliant smile to the right hands. Seeing an orthodontist no later than age seven can help achieve a healthy, beautiful smile. For more information, visit braces.org. Ladies, are you talking to your partners about HIV? Two out of every three new HIV AIDS cases in women are among black women. Get informed, get tested. Early detection can save your life. If you test positive, seek treatment from a doctor. Join the campaign to end Black AIDS, a partnership between Abbott and the Magic Johnson Foundation. Go to WeStandWithMagic.com, get resources, and become a member. And join today, and thank you. At Southwest Minnesota State University, our students come first. It's a commitment you can see in our new regional events center, residence hall, student center, and science lab renovation. We've invested over $80 million in the past decade for top-notch facilities. And we're not stopping there. Southwest Minnesota State University, it's where you belong. All right, welcome back to Marshall, Minnesota, the Regional Event Center on the campus of SMSU. Michael Sterling here with Brett Miller, and uh, looks like a, hopefully should be a, a fairly good game. Brett, SMSU coming in with a record of uh, one and four. Their lone victory came against Missouri Valley on November 17th. SMSU, their first uh, regular season home matchup, they played uh, Bethel in an exhibition game here at the RA facility, facility uh, last month, but uh, the Mustangs hoping to uh, come out here and get a victory. Like you said, they have kind of a young team, only uh, one senior, and uh, so SMSU looking to get a victory here before their home crowd. Right, and a player that fans want to keep their eye on tonight is senior guard Bree Holloman. Um, last season, Holloman played in all 26 games, and she finished second on the team, averaging 10 points and almost four rebounds per game. She led the team with 47 three-point field goals last year, the 10th highest in the school's single season history. And she also recorded a team high of 54 assists. She shot 40.7% from the field last year and a team high of 38.5% from the three-point range. She scored in double figures in 15 out of, the 26, out of the 26 games, so pretty impressive effort from her last year. And real quickly, the officials for tonight, um, Mike Bukowski out of Sauk Rapids, Minnesota. He's going to be the referee. Terry Dirks out of Clearwater, Minnesota. And then uh, Mary Toberman out of Oak Park Heights, Minnesota. Those are the officials for tonight's game. For uh, USF, they have kind of a, a few impact players, actually. Uh, J.C. Ulmer averaging 11.5 uh, points per game this year. Also, Laura Johnson averaging 12 points per game and nearly six rebounds. McKenna Greathouse nearly averaging a double-double on the season, almost uh, uh, 9.8 points per game and then nine rebounds a game. So those are some of the players to watch out for on the USF end. And uh, USF actually comes into this game with a three and one record. Their only loss was to Nebraska Kearney, 54 to 45 in overtime. That was back November 14th. And as you said, Brett, in the preseason poll, uh, USF picked to uh, finish ninth, SMSU was picked to finish uh, 14th. And uh, in the first full season of us, NSIC play for Sioux Falls, we'll see how they fare here against SMSU. Right, and just looking at the stat sheet really quick, there's only one 20 point scoring game this year with no double doubles, and that was by ha Holloman. So if the Mustangs want to look to win tonight, they'll need to get more than just Holloman into the 20 points. Cougars looking to get the ball inside. And a quick basket, that was number 32, Laura Johnson. Oh. And a player already down for SMSU, that's not good. No, can, trying to see what number she is. She's holding her left knee, so hopefully it's nothing serious there. Like we said, SMSU already missing a Svensson, Miller, and Dusky. And uh, 
why don't we take like a quick 30 second break um we'll be back you're watching mustang basketball here on kssu tv southwest minnesota state university where private school atmosphere meets public school cost programs like culinology agronomy and environmental science set the standard nationwide where grad placement rates are over 97 percent and the school invests in you, putting over $80 million back into the university. Southwest Minnesota State University, where you belong. If you've had a stroke. Welcome back to the Regional Event Center in Marshall, Minnesota. Actually, the RA facility, uh, Regional Event Center, the football, still stuck on uh, football. But uh, not, all, not uh, 18 seconds into the game, SMSU is Val Sar kind of tweaked her ankle or her leg on that play. So uh, play resumes though, Michaela Sothoff bringing the ball up. It's gonna try to drive and loose ball and there's gonna be a jump ball call. Uh, possession arrow points to the Mustangs though. A sloppy start for SMSU breaking out some uh, new uniforms this year. Right, you want to, uh, you see these players coming in with a uh, determined look on their faces, driving the ball hard, trying to get the inside points down the paint, see what the uh, Sioux Falls big girls can do down on the defensive side. Holloman with the ball, goes up for the shot, puts it in. And again, Holloman, her junior year, the last two full seasons has been known as the team's sharpshooter. SMSU gets the quick 3-0 lead. The 3-2 lead, sorry. SMSU is running their 2-3 defense. Shot clock running down to seven, and that shot partially blocked by Hannah Beeler, who uh, her freshman year didn't really see a lot of playing time, but last year got quite a bit, and this year uh, looks like she's starting out with some uh, decent minutes. Number 30, Tegan Molden, gonna inbound the ball. And a nice pass, another inside shot. This one doesn't go in, that was Laura Johnson again. Sodhoff into Nagel. Both Nagel and Rebecca Rowling actually uh, junior college transfers. And you see Nagel there gets her first basket of the game. They are both from around the uh, Fort Dodge area. Actually both played basketball at Iowa Central Community College, so uh, those two are familiar with each other. And that is a traveling violation. Alyssa Rushton tried to fake the three-pointer and start dribbling, but uh, ref caught her in a travel. Right. Uh, Sada up is stuck in the backcourt there, which finds a way around. Um, number 24, Strasburg. Uh, Holloman now with the ball. Holloman trying to drive, but that'll be a turnover on SMSU. Johnson trying to drive down for USF. Goes up for the shot. Again, another inside miss, but an offensive rebound. That one no good. Allison Nagel finally with the rebound for SMSU. Inside pass to Beeler. Shot was blocked there. First foul of the game. That'll put her on the line. And we have a Sioux Falls player. Oh, looks like she's all right. Yep. That was Laura Johnson, her first personal foul. Didn't look like Beeler had too uh, good of an angle on that shot anyway. Looks like she was directly under the basket. No, nope, but she drew the foul, and that's what the team's hoping to get for, get put on the free throw line and get the easy one-pointers. First one goes in. Hannah Beeler actually uh, five of, well now six of seven on the year free throw shooting as a team SMSU shooting 68%. So not great, but she puts the first two in. SMSU now with a seven to two lead. It's a good start that the Mustangs want to see early on in the game. Want to keep the momentum on their side. Don't let anything shift towards Sioux Falls. Laura Johnson up with the three. Again, no good. I think Johnson has taken all but one of the uh, Sioux Falls shots. I think, I think you're right, yeah. Nagel trying to get it in, another turnover. Don't know who that was to, but. 
And that'll be a kick ball. I believe it'll be a kick ball anyway. It's kind of a starting out a little sloppy. Both defenses are pretty sloppy, but. And it is, uh, it is white out night here on campus. See a lot of the student section wearing white. as uh, the Cougars trying to get the ball on the inside. Almost a steal. It's a go wide open there. She's the Johnson. wide open three. Again, Johnson this time nailing her second shot of the night. Seven of five, SMSU with the lead. SMSU's probably gonna have to focus on her as she's taken almost all of the shots for the Cougars. Shot goes up, and they're gonna call a foul on the Cougars. That's number 23, Rebecca Rowling. 24, Christy Strasburg with the foul. And this is what the Mustangs wanna get, try and get those balls down in the paint, try and draw the fouls, get the free throws, maybe get a bucket and one. You can see it's working out pretty good right now as they lead eight to five right now. First free throw goes in. Actually, uh, Rebecca, not a, too successful in free throws this year. Uh, three out of 12 after those two this season. Not a very good percentage, but SMSU does have an eight to five lead. Cougars once again try to get it to the inside, but kick it out and another three pointer. That time number 14, JC Ulmer. And now the game is all tied up at eight. Looks like the Mustangs are trying to rush, rush the ball up court here, but a lot of time left. You don't want to over rush anything like that shot right there. Looks like she forced it. Yeah, Hope Bonlander just uh, threw it up and touched nothing but air. Johnson with another attempt, three-pointer, rebounded by Nagel. A lot of threes coming out of Sioux Falls court and another steal for Sioux Falls. Yeah, bad pass there by Nagel. Good and pass for Sioux Falls, though. Good team chemistry right there. Yeah, good unselfish ball play. Cougars now with a 10 to eight lead. 15, nearly 15 and a half minutes left to go in the first half. SMSU with three turnovers on the game so far. A lot of passing going on out for on the perimeter. Trying to get it inside there so the big girls can put it up in the hoop. And Nagel, kind of a ill-advised shot, but a rebound by Holloman. Now, like I pointed out, these girls are forcing their shots. That one goes in, though. That Nagel. one gets a home talk about a home court advantage. It gets a good roll. Nagel does, and she has four points on the game. Now all tied up at ten. Laura Johnson gets it to the inside, and another basket. McKenna Greathouse. You can see that it in. the Mustangs defense is just collapsing down the paint. They put too many girls around the perimeter because that's when Sioux Falls starts shooting and then an opening comes down the paint and Sioux Falls takes advantage of it. Nice pass to Sothoff. She puts it up, another uh, bad angle. Bonlander with an easy shot, but it rolls out. SMSU, you want to win these games, you got to put in the those bunnies. Coach Traphagen yelling out a play for his Cougar team. 10 seconds now on the shot clock, another inside drive. The basket goes in and I believe they're gonna call a foul on Hope Bonlander. Yep, so they get the and one attempt here, so potential three point play for Sioux Falls Cougars. Was Chrissy Strasburg. Now Megan Dreider, Anessa Rush, and Hannah Beeler coming in for SMSU. Strasburg on the uh, season six of eight from the free throw line, uh, averaging 3.8 points per game. And she knocks down that one. So the Cougars with a 15 to 10 lead. Four, 14 minutes left to go in the first half. Yeah, number 34 here for the Mustangs, and Essa Roche. Kind of little rookie Rubio moves down there. No look passes, full in the Sioux Falls defense. 
And they're going to call another foul on USF. I believe that'll be called on, uh, yeah, number 10, uh, Alyssa Rushton. Third team foul on the Cougars. So they're going to reset that shot clock. Inbound play. SMSU has to get open. Pass to D. Ryder. Over to Rush. Kind of moving the ball in the perimeter. Finally gets it inside of Beeler. And she'll take the shot, and that'll be no good. Rebounded by Johnson. And the Cougar is going to slow it down a little bit. 13 minutes, 20 seconds left in the first half. A nice drop down pass. That was number 50, Kelly Hoff. And uh, Laura Johnson with the assist. USF now with a 17 to 10 lead. This is not how the Mustangs wanted to start out. Didn't want to see this kind of defense. Got to pick up on their offense too. Shots off the mark right there, but rebound Mustangs. But another bad pass. Another turnover for SMSU. Johnson with the ball. Strasburg kicks it back out. Ulmer with the ball back to Strasburg. Kicks it out, another three-point attempt, and it's good. Sioux Falls with a 20 to 10 lead, and uh, Coach Kruger has seen enough. She wants to call a timeout. So a uh, 20 to 10 lead for Sioux Falls, 12 minutes, 32 seconds left. We're gonna take a quick 30 second break. You're watching Mustang Basketball on KSSU TV. At Southwest Minnesota State University, our students come first. It's a commitment you can see in our new regional events center, residence hall, student center, and science lab renovation. We've invested over $80 million in the past decade for top-notch facilities. And we're not stopping there. Southwest Minnesota State University, it's where you belong. Welcome back to the RA facility on the campus of SMSU where Sioux Falls has a 20 to 10 lead over SMSU with 12 minutes, 32 seconds left to go in the first half. Let's take a look at some quick stats. Sioux Falls dominating in the paint, 10 points in the paint, none for SMSU. SMSU also three of 11 from the field, 27%. Sioux Falls eight of 14 for 57%, including three of five from behind the arc. Brett, what do you think uh, SMSU has to do to kind of uh, tone down this uh, Cougar offense? I think they just need to get their offensive chemistry going. As you see, they have four steals for Sioux Falls right there, one block. And that's what the Mustangs want to see, so they got to try and read where the defensive players for Sioux Falls are going and make the adjustments to get the balls to uh, someone who can make a play happen. Rush bringing the ball up. It's a Debon lander. Beeler working on the inside, finally gets the pass. Kicks it back out to Bon lander. Over to Rolling. Trying to work it inside, pass to DeRider. Can't handle it and it'll go out of bounds. Another turnover on the Mustangs. I believe that'll be the fifth SMSU turnover. Not how you wanted to start at the game. You're up eight to two and suddenly you're down 20 to 10. Things can turn around really fast on you. Johnson with the ball, trying to get it inside to McKinnis. She dribbles it out. Hoff with the ball. Passing it to Ulmer. Back to Johnson. Another deep three this time. Doesn't go in, Rush with the rebound. Lauren McKinnis guarding Rush, pass to Nagel. She puts it up, and Ulmer with the rebound for USF. USF very quick paced team. Ulmer drives easily and gets the layup. USF with a 22 to 10 lead, and uh, this game not looking uh, too pretty so far for the Mustangs. Oh, the defensive players aren't watching where the ball is going, and another turnover right there. Omer might be uh, getting another quick layup, but she gets fouled by Hannah Beeler. 
Mustangs are getting beat on both ends of the floor. It's not what they want to see, so they're going to have to try and make some adjustments here. Yeah, Coach Kruger uh, can't be too happy. It looks like the Mustangs, they came out with a decent start, but lately they've uh, just kind of been falling asleep at the wheel. Right. First free throw is no good for Ul Ulmer. The 5'8 sophomore out of Canton, South Dakota. And again, uh, she's had a pretty good season for USF this year, averaging 11 and a half points per game. And that second free throw does go in, so it's a 23 to 10 lead for USF with 11 minutes and six seconds left in the first half. Yeah, you gotta think that the Mustangs are gonna be more careful with the ball on offense here. And you gotta pick up the pace on defense because they're getting beat and that's leading to easy Cougar points. Beeler with the deep three. You don't see Hannah Beeler taking too many outside shots, but I'm sure uh, fans won't complain on that one. The league cut down to, to 10 for USF, 23 to 13. Bailey Bauman with the ball. Alyssa Rushton now gonna drive to the inside. No good. Nagel with some nice defense. Sodhoff now gonna bring it up. Nagel gets the pass over to Holloman. Jesse Watts in the game now. Oh, another sloppy pass. I don't know why you toss it down in there toward the out of bounds line when you're being heavily guarded by a Sioux Falls player, but. JC uh, Ulmer did a good job of denying the pass, was able to reach around uh, her offensive counterpart and knock it away. All right, Mustangs are lucky to still have the ball in their possession as the shot clock winds down, five seconds left on it. Beeler, another three-pointer, that one's no good. Another foul. Allison Nagel will uh, go to the line. First free throw rattles in. Laura Johnson getting back into the game. Also Chrissy Strasberg gonna come in for McInnes. And Nagel goes two for two on the line on that trip. 23 to 15 lead for USF. Halfway through the first half. Johnson trying to get it into Great House. That shot knocked away. Sodhoff now with the ball. Pass to Holloman. She puts it up. And almost a rebound by Holl or by Beeler. Ulmer now trying to drive in. Shot goes up, no good, but she gets fouled. So Ulmer will go to the line. Foul on Jesse Watts. And we're seeing all these SMSU players, or excuse me, Sioux Falls players at the free throw lines, and that just leads to Easy points for the Cougars, something Mustangs got to try and avoid here. Two for two on that trip for Ulmer. Already has uh, seven points. 25 to 15 lead for the Cougars. Sothoff into Nagel. Back to Sothoff. Trying to drive baseline. Pass out to Nagel, over to Holloman. Back out to Nagel, she's gonna take a three, and that's good. Uh, two of the SMSU's post players, Beeler and Ho Holloman, both nail threes here in the first half. 25 to 18, SMSU kind of uh, trying to fight their way back into this game. Omer with a deep three, hits nothing but air. Watts with the rebound. Watts with the pull-up jumper, that one rattles out. Great house with the rebound. SMSU is getting a little antsy here, just forcing their shots. 
Another air ball for Sioux Falls there. That's two in a row. I believe that shot might have been partially blocked. I wasn't, uh, couldn't quite be sure. But uh, SMSU only down seven. Largest lead for the Cougars is 13. Beeler now on the inside, putting up a prayer. Wasn't really the best shot. And now she <laughs> tried to pass it outside, but uh, I guess it must have been tipped because they're saying Mustang ball. But uh, ball hit the back of the backboard and then uh, bounced over by the cheerleaders. Right. Six turnovers for the Mustangs, so kind of a sloppy half so far. And that thought that might be another one, but a foul called on the Cougars. That's Cougars' 16 foul this uh, half. One more, and Mustangs will get one and one. Mustangs looking for an open player. Nagel with an open shot. She nails it. So after being down by 13 with 11 minutes left, SMSU only down 25 to 20. Offensive rebound for the Cougars doesn't produce any points. SMSU now driving down. Sothoff over to Nagel. Her second three-point attempt of the game, no good. Watts with the rebound, though, and she gets fouled. Her shot is no good, but she will go to the line to shoot two. This is what you want to see out of the Mustangs, fighting for the rebounds and getting the contact when they're going up for the shot, so they end up on the free throw line. And you can see it's helping now as we're only down five. Mustangs playing very uh, scrappy basketball, really getting after it. And Watts nails that first free throw. For SMSU, Allison Nagel, 11 points already. So kind of a really uh, the uh, energy source for the Mustang offense so far. That second free throw is up and good as well. Strasburg to bring the ball down the court. McKinnis now will drive down, puts it up, and it is good. And she had just kind of a open lane there, like a parting of the Red Sea, not a Mustang in front of her. 27 to 22, Cougars with the lead with a little more than seven minutes left. Nagel, nice little uh, underhanded uh, kind of a hook shot. Just kind of lobbed it up there, but got the kiss off the glass and two points for the Mustangs. And now uh, it's only a one possession game, 27-24. Good defense by SMSU. McKinnis with the ball, pulls up for the shot. Nagel with another rebound. Mustangs could potentially tie the game here now. You don't want to look at a three-pointer right away though. When you can get two points when you have a lot of time left, you don't want to try and force your threes up. I mean, Team chemistry is what's important here. USF can try to slow it down here. Strasburg looking for an open teammate. She's going to drive in. Shot is no good. Rebound by Greathouse, though. Loose ball. Kicks it out. That shot no good. Rebounded by Holloman. Tegan Molden with the no good three point attempt. And that ball knocked out of bounds. Will stay with the Mustangs as Rebecca Rowling and Anessa Rush come into the game. Now number 50, Kelly Hoff, going to come back in for Great House for uh, the Cougars. Rush gets the inbound pass. Back to Rowling. And another uh, bad pass. Jump ball was called, but the position arrow to the Cougars, so they will get the ball. Not looking where they're passing it. It's always into a black jersey. Not something we want to see here. Again, Sioux Falls comes into this game with a three and one record. SMSU comes in at one and four. Off with the ball. Strasburg now drives on the inside. The shot no good. Rush with the rebound. She's going to try to take it down court. 
pass to Rowling and wasn't able to handle it. And again, another uh, unforced error. Some of these uh, simplest things SMSU trying to make difficult here tonight. <coughs> Mustangs are just lucky it's as close as it, as it is with all the turnovers that they have and all the points that Sioux Falls could have potentially had. McKinnis, her shot no good, tipped around. Finally, uh, Sodhoff with the rebound. Sodhoff trying to get it inside, kicks it out to Rolling, puts up a three, no good. And uh, looks like a loose ball foul gonna be called on Bonlander. Yeah, I didn't like how they ran that. She had an open lane to drive to the hoop and she kicked it out for a pass. I mean, I know you like teamwork, but when you have the chance to get an, an easy shot, you wanna take that, get your team closer. Yeah. Statistically speaking, uh, I know this is hopefully obvious, but the uh, closer you get to the basket, the easier the shot should be. Yeah, so, uh, especially when you have nice. an open lane, just yeah. wide open there. And again, on the defensive side, Mustangs going after those loose balls. I'm sure a lot of times Coach Kruger would rather have them uh, grab the ball, though, rather than uh, tip it away. All these second chance uh, opportunities for Cougar does not not going too good for SMSU. They're just lucky that they're missing all these shots to keep us closer in the game. It's definitely a sloppy first half. McKinnis, the shot is up and good. 29 to 24, USF with the lead. Holloman with the ball, back out to Nagel. Holloman puts up a three. But it's no good. Rebound by Bailey Bauman. I don't know why she would shoot that when she had a girl right up in her face, but I don't know if the shot clock was running down and didn't see it, but. The rebound by Laura Johnson goes up and gets fouled. Johnson had uh, six feet, uh, just towered over the uh, Mustang players trying to box her out. Again, both teams kind of the, uh, have a few players around the same about the same size. Nagel, 6'3", the tallest player for SMSU. Uh, tallest active player for Sioux Falls is 6'1", so not really uh, too much of a height discrepancy. Right. I mean, you look at the time of possession and uh, SMSU has the ball for almost 45 seconds more and you Looked like they could have produced more points down here in the paint, but again, like I said, they kick it out to the three-pointers, and that seems to be their shot to try tonight. It's not working to their advantage all the time. Another three now, right here. Another three, and Beeler with the offensive board. Back out to Rush. 31-24, to USF with the lead. Less than three and a half minutes to go in the first half now. Pass inside to Nagel. Nice little move but uh, not strong enough as it goes off the front of the rim. Falls is just physical for the Mustang stand up, but there's a big block there. That's what they that's, need to see. That's the height of uh, Alice Nagel. And you see uh, Chrissy Strasberg at 5'4", giving up almost a foot in height. Uh, if you're 5'4", and you go up in a battle against a girl who's 6'3", you're gonna lose a nine out of 10 times. Oh, definitely. That's not something you want to see coming at you. Johnson trying to drive it, and another foul. This uh, Sioux Falls coach, very vocal, Travis Traphagen in his fifth season. But he really gets his girls to play it though. They know what they're doing out there. Very impressive. First free throw up and good. Sodhoff and Rowling coming back in for SMSU. SMSU, a few minutes ago, the lead was down to uh, three for the Cougars. Now they have it back up to an eight point lead. Now it's at nine, 33 to 24. Cougars with uh, six unanswered points. Oh. SMSU is just rushing it there, not not controlling the ball very well. You want to just slow down. You got a whole nother half to work with. You're only down nine. Could be worse. I mean, three possession game right now. 
Saad Hoff gets the inbound pass. Inside to Nagel. Yeah, could have passed it down there in the paint, but didn't take it. Rolling, the shot goes up, rolling off the rim. So much Un for that uh, home, home court roll that you were talking about earlier. Yeah, unfortunate break for SMSU. Coming up on two and a half minutes to go in the first half. Strasburg with the ball, trying to find an opening, kicks it out to McInnes. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Both Johnson's chanting it down there. Passing it out to Hoff. Offensive rebound, no good. Mustangs finally come out with it. Sothoff bringing it down the court to Nagel. Nagel trying another three. I don't know why uh, Nagel is taking so many threes. I mean, she got it once. And now on the other end, we talked about the, the discrepancy in total possession. SMSU uh, kind of more methodical. Sioux Falls trying to drive it down court as soon as they get the ball. 35 to 24. And now another turnover on the Mustangs. And uh, McKinnis will go to the line to foul on Rebecca Rowling. And this is just uh, kind of getting ridiculous. SMS SMSU uh, was only down 27 to 24 a few minutes ago. To kind of imploding on themselves here. Yeah, some mistakes that are being made that shouldn't be. And it's hurting them as we can see. Free throws can be crucial. I mean, it can, it can make or break a game and that's what's happening right here. A lot of their points are coming off free throws right now. Nine for 10. So the Mustangs wanna try and cut back on that, keep them off the line. Another free throw, so 37 to 24 lead for the Cougars. SMSU out, actually out rebounding Sioux Falls, 24 to 20. To Mustangs haven't been able to do as much with those as Sadhoff puts up a wild shot. Another okay. shot she's forcing. They can't force their shots like they are. Just doesn't work like that. And again, another open lane for Strasburg, but fortunately for the Mustangs, she missed the shot, stepped out of bounds while she was trying to get the rebound. Minute 20 seconds left in the first half. Nagel gets the ball on the inside. Nice pass to Sothoff. Nice teamwork there. And that's more of what SMSU needs. USF coach just beside himself. I don't think he knows he is. team has 11, an 11 point lead. That can go down in a hurry though, as we just saw earlier. They were up, what, 13 and came back, made a three point game. Rebound for the Mustangs, uh, another sloppy pass. Mustangs recover it though. Sothoff driving and uh, foul called on USF. But uh, she took about three or four steps was, without dribbling that ball. I'd say that was a pretty close call to a travel right there. They haven't really been going to Nagel lately. I mean, they've passed her the ball, but she hasn't really tried to get shots on the inside. Right. They've been going with even more threes or just trying to drive inside, putting up these wild shots and hoping they get fouls. And uh, as you see, it hasn't worked out for them lately. They gotta hit their free throws too. They're seven for nine now. I mean, that's pretty good, but you wanna hit them all. That's why they call it free throws, the easiest shot in the game. 38 seconds left. USF with a 10 point lead. Nice steal by Hannah Beeler. And, uh, but she loses it. And right back. story of the game for SMSU. And it comes back as an easy layup for, I believe that was Ulmer. Man, you gotta be so frustrated if you're a fan of the Mustangs or a coach or a player. SMSU can hold for the last shot. Holloman kicks out to Sothoff. Another wild shot, no good. Rebounded by Greathouse. Shot is up, no good. One and count it anyway, it looked like it was still in her hands when the light went off on the backboard, but. And that is how the first half will end. SMSU had a good spurt in the middle, but ultimately USF with a 39 to 27 lead, just a flat out played a better first half than SMSU. 
So uh, we are going to take a little bit of a break, but we will be back in a while, bring you first half stats and the second half action. You are watching Mustang Basketball here on KSSU TV.
Welcome back to the RA facility here on the campus of Marshall, Minnesota, or on the campus of SMSU in Marshall, Minnesota, where uh, the Sioux Falls Cougars have a 39 to 27 lead over SMSU. Michael Sterling here with Brett Miller and Brett. Uh, we got a uh, first half stats right in front of us here. What are some of the things that uh, stuck out to you in the first half? Well, you look at the field goal attempts. SMSU has taken 31. They've only hit eight out of those 31s. They've taken th 10 three-pointers, and they've only hit three of those. Obviously, shot quality, hitting the shots is a big must for this second half in order to come back. We've seen how this game has been played out defensively and offensively. Um, by the looks of it right now, there's little room for mistake for SMSU. Yeah, let's take a look at some more statistics. Sioux Falls, eight steals to SMSU's one. Uh, 10 turnovers for the Mustangs, only four for Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls with 10 points off their turnovers, only two for SMSU. Uh, bench points, Sioux Falls with 20, SMSU with seven. Also, Sioux Falls with 20 points in the paint to SMSU's four. Dominating a lot of the stats. Let's take a look at some of the leaders. Allison Nagel, the leading scorer for the Mustangs with 13. J.C. Ulmer with 10 points for the Cougars. Laura Johnson close with nine. Lauren McInnes with eight. Laura Johnson with nine rebounds also for USF. Allison Nagel with seven rebounds. Hannah Beeler with five. Nagel also with two assists and two blocks. Laura Johnson with three assists and one block. So uh, Laura Johnson for the Cougars and uh, Allison Nagel for the Mustangs kind of in uh, the main threats for each team. We'll see if uh, either team has made any uh, adjustments during halftime to kind of slow the either of those two down. Well, yeah, like you pointed out, 20 Mustangs now scored 20 to four in the paint. Not something you want to see down there because we've had lots of opportunities. She just haven't converted. And when you look at the SMSU's defense for Sioux Falls, they just open lane after open lane and that's what led to this big difference. So second half play starts. See if the Mustangs have any uh, better luck on this end of the court offensively. Pass inside to Nagel. She's gonna step back and shoot it, and it's good. And that's the thing. She does have, uh, well now 15 points, but a lot of her shots have been uh, kind of at near the top of the key. And uh, it's kind of the reason why uh, SMSU doesn't have uh, a, lot of, a lot of those uh, points in the paint. Right. Well, that's a big step because hitting only a fourth of your shots inside the arc is not the way you wanna play considering it only gets it 27 points. They're lucky that it's just a 12 point game and not 22. That was a nice box out, but they forgot about uh, Great House there who was open to get the rebound. Sothoff with the ball. Holloman gets it inside to Nagel. Back out to Rolling. she puts up a three and it's good. Now a 41 to 32 game for USF. And again, it is wide-out night here on the campus of SMSU. The men's game will be following this one. There were a few men's players sitting just behind us right now, but they must be in the locker room getting prepared for their game. That's right after this one. And big turnover for the Cougars. Sothoff with the pass, but they're going to call a kick ball. So the Mustangs are going to retain possession. As you see more people filtering into the stands. Yeah, it's not as full as I thought it would be for Whiteout Night, but. You see Stanger, the Mustang mascot over there on the far sideline, his white shirt on. You gotta do something to get the crowd amped over there. Sothoff with the ball. Holloman trying to drive in, finds a little bit of an opening, but a, I don't know, Way off shot, Nagel puts up a three. That one no good. She just kind of threw it at the bottom of the backboard there. It's not gonna get the ball in, but. Rushton trying to drive on the inside. Basket no good, but she gets fouled. Yeah, SMSU, anytime they drive, they put up a wild shot. On the other end, USF, kind of some controlled chaos. They do uh, 
kind of rush down the court, but they always put up a, a good shot. You see a couple, you'll see a couple of wild shots come from their way, but they somehow seem to convert those. And it's pretty interesting to see how they, how the two teams approach their offensive strategies here. Rushton nails the second free throw. And now a 10 point lead for the Cougars. 18 minutes left to go in the game. Good defense there on Sothoff. USF's putting on that full court press there. Holloman kicks it out to Sothoff. Trying to drive it in, kicks it back out. Holloman puts up a three off the side of the backboard. Nice rebound by Rowling though, she puts it in. SMSU, like we said, fighting with those rebounds, actually out rebounding Sioux Falls. 20, uh, it says 27, but I believe that was their 28th rebound. The 27 to 25. Johnson with the pass, knocked away by, actually stolen by Rowling. And uh, she gets fouled. SMSU, we saw a little uh, spurt there kind of in the middle of the first half where they uh, cut the deficit down to three, but then USF kind of pulled away again. Yeah, they won on a 12-3 run, not something the Mustangs needed going into halftime, but I think uh, Coach Kruger gave them a little talk during the halftime break and got them focused in on what they need to do this half to come back and win the game. And another turnover on the Mustangs. Strasburg with the ball. Over to Bauman. Now to Johnson, back to Rushton. Rushton trying to drive now but loses it. And that'll be a turnover on the Cougars. I was watching down in the paint there when the Cougars were running the ball around. Number 45, Nagel for the Mustangs was guarding her girl, uh, Great House, and Great House was running all over. Nagel didn't know what to do. She just stood there and left it for an open shot, but fortunately the Mustangs got the ball in the turnover. Nagel with the shot, no good. I believe they're gonna call foul on Beeler for a push off. First three and a half minutes already, three fouls combined for two teams. You get pretty physical, but. Yeah, basketball is a physical game, especially when you get those uh, big post players right down near the basket. Ball in the corner, that's Johnson trying to get to the inside. Goes up with a shot, hits the front of the rim. Rebound by rolling, a couple uh, players get tangled up and fall to the ground there. Rolling with a nice spin move. Uh, her pass knocked away, and again, like you said earlier, SMSU really needs to watch where they're passing the ball. It's like number 32 right here for the Cougars. Laura Johnson lost her contact on the court, so her sub comes in. Sothoff with the ball. Gets it inside to Nagel. She's gonna put up a shot, but no good. Just did roll off the rim. Cougars trying to go down the court. That shot no good, nothing but air. That was Tegan Molden. Kind of went over the rim, passed by the hoop completely. Beeler kind of posting up near the free throw line. And Beeler gets an opening and is able to put it in. A couple of Cougars players fell to the ground. Ankle breaking move right there. The thing that I've noticed in this game though, a lot of the uh, Mustang players, when they're posting up, they're posting up near the free throw line. Not really uh, that close to the basket. And there's another open lane, easy points for Cougars. That's momentum killer for the Mustangs. Alyssa, Alyssa Rushton with the easy layup. Back to an eight point lead for USF. Nagel with another uh, mid-range shot, knocks it down. Nagel chan channeling her inner uh, Tim Duncan able to knock those mid-range uh, jumpers down. 17 points now for Nagel. Down to a six point lead for the Cougars. Not seeing much dribbling going on for the Cougars out here. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Strasburg trying to find an opening, kicks it out. 
Rustin trying to drive it in. Shot partially blocked by Beeler. Big defensive stop. Holloman going to slow it back down a little bit. Sodhoff passes it off to Nagel. Pass to Beeler. Now Holloman puts up a three. And it's no good. And it'll uh, go out of bounds. And a few subs coming in for the Mustangs. I believe uh, he's going to call a timeout. So uh, we're going to take a quick 30-second break. USF, 44-38 to lead, 14.04 left to go in the game. You're watching Mustang Basketball here on KSSU-TV. American Hero. I want to help people. I want to make a difference. I want to get things done. Could I be a hero? She had to apply. I should give this a try. There she met people who shared her passion, people who wanted to make change, people who joined America. They cleaned beaches, they helped wildlife. Together they served, together they made a difference. Together they were heroes. In AmeriCorps, you can be a hero too. Join AmeriCorps. Welcome back to the RI facility on the campus of SMSU where the University of Sioux Falls Cougars have a 44-38 lead over the SMSU Mustangs. 14 minutes and 4 seconds left to go. Allison Nagel with 17 points leading the Mustangs, having a pretty good game so far. But, uh, kind of a sloppy play here, Brett. We've seen a lot of turnovers, although uh, SMSU hasn't uh, been turning the ball over as much here the first six minutes of this half. Right. They're doing what I think they should be doing right now, keeping the deficit under double digits. Keep it a max, three possession game. See what they can get clicking here with 14 minutes left in the game. A little miscommunication there between the Sioux Falls players. But the Cougars gonna try to increase their six point lead. Their largest lead of the game was uh, 13 points. That was in the first half. Johnson with the ball going up for the shot. No good. Cougars. Kind of exhausted there when she took that shot. Well, the Cougars started, started out three of five from the three-point arc. Since then, they missed nine straight three-pointers. They're now three of 14. Nice basket cut by Rush. And a no look pass by Ro or to by Rush to Rolling, and she knocks down the shot. She looks like the Mustangs' Ricky Rubio there. Kind of a fancy play that time, and it worked out for the Mustangs. Only down four now. Strasburg kicks it out. See if we can force some turnovers here. Mustangs really need it right now. Good defense, nice screen there by Hoff. Johnson trying to work it inside. Another partially blocked shot by Nagel. That's where her, her height really comes into play. Two inches taller than a, any active player for the Cougars. And another inside basket. This time it's Bree Holloman. And just like that, the Mustangs are uh, the closest they've been uh, since the start of the game, 44 to 42. It's a 15 to five run for the Mustangs this half. Something they wanna get out of their players. Strasburg pass in the corner. That shot no good. Kelly Hoff was wide open there to get the rebound. And now Laura Johnson was wide open as well. Shot no good, but she got fouled. Now Jesse Watts going to come back in the game. Also, uh, Alyssa Rushton going to come back in for the Cougars. See that Mustangs are making changes on both ends of the court, and it's really showing now only down by three when they were down by 12 at halftime. Something must have been said in that locker room to get them going. Now, Laura Johnson, 10 points on the night. JC Ulmer also with 10 points for the Cougars. Make that 11 for Johnson. Lead back to four points for the Cougars. Rush to Bonlander, back out to Rush. Trying to make a few moves. Puts up a mid-range shot, too short. Rebounded by Rushton. Her release looked kind of funny there when she let it go. 
Johnson with the ball. Nice defense by Watts. Strasburg, top of the three-point arc. Get, pat, ball gets knocked away. Nice defense by Sothoff. Nagel might want to slow it down a little bit. And uh, another turnover. And uh, almost another turnover for the Cougars. Shot no good. And kind of a, just a fast-paced game right now. Both teams just kind of a pretty much like a track meet. Nagel, shot is up, but no good. Bonlander puts it up, shot up, no good, but a foul. And these girls are moving faster than I can talk. But, uh, going back to that uh, few plays ago by uh, Nagel, that's one of the main reasons why you don't want your uh, post girl uh, bringing the ball up. She kind of lost control of it. Right. Hope Bonlander looking for her first points of the game. Free throw, no good. That was kind of a high arcing rainbow-like shot. 11 minutes, 31 seconds left to go in the second half. USF with a 46 to 42 lead. Free throws are a big part of this game right now. That one is good and uh, SMSU nine of 12 on the game from the line. Sioux Falls 13 of 15, so both teams doing pretty well. Rushton with the ball. McKinnis now with the ball and a, a whistle and under the hoop foul right there. Don't know who that. I think they called it on Sothoff. Didn't see what happened down there, but anyway, Cougars still get the ball. Rushton gonna inbound it. J.C. Ulmer with the shot, and it's good. Big shot by Ulmer, her 13th point of the game. 49 to 43 lead for the Cougars with 11 minutes left. Beeler, nice pass to Bonlander, and she puts it in. So it's back to a four point deficit for SMSU. McKinnis bringing the ball up the court. Ulmer trying to drive baseline, puts it up, and it is good, rolls in, 51 to 45. Not what you want to see, they just keep getting those easy points down. They don't want to drive it past our players. Beeler, that shot, no good, rebounded by Rushton. And uh, Sioux Falls is gonna slow it down a tiny bit. McKinnis to Hoff. Inside of Johnson, but another turnover by the Cougars. Rush now with the ball. And she's gonna kick it out to Watts. Watts to Bonlander. Beeler posting up near the free throw line. Almost another turnover there. Beeler gets the ball back. Shot up, no good. Beeler gets her own rebound. Puts it back up again. And uh, just like that, the lead back down to four for the Cougars. The Sioux Falls coach is not like what he's seeing at all. He's, looks like he's got restless leg syndrome over there. Nine and a half minutes left. Ulmer with the drive and the basket. And also the foul. Well, it's kind of fell to the ground. So uh, that's definitely not what you wanted if you're a Mustang fan. No, not at all. A few subs coming in for both teams. J.C. Ulmer already with 17 points on the game. Going to the line for a free throw. That one's good, so now USF back up with a seven point lead. Now it looks like they're gonna try to go with kind of a full court almost like a man-to-man. Nagel -man. gets the pass. Another mid-range jump shot, no good. And the Cougar is gonna drive down the court. McInnes, that pass knocked away by Nagel. Great house with the ball, trying to drive baseline. Shot, I believe that was partially blocked by Nagel. Again, her height working to great advantage for SMSU. Yeah, um, 
I remember I was going to save there. Yeah. They're going to give the ball to the Cougars. McKinnis gets the inbound pass, kind of works it up to the <coughs> top of the arc. Now she's trying to drive baseline. Maybe a little push off there. No, no call, though. She gets the basket. Now it's a 56-47 lead for the Cougars. And a timeout called. We're going to take a quick little 30-second timeout as well. 56-47 to 47 lead for USF. 8 minutes, 45 seconds left in the game. You are watching Mustang Basketball on KSSU-TV. You can eradicate polio. You can promote peace. You can feed the hungry. You can help children do better in school. Because you can get involved with Rotary. Because Rotary believes that by working together, you can do anything. Learn more at Rotary.org. Welcome back to the RA facility on the campus of SMSU, where the University of Sioux Falls Cougars have a 56 to 47 lead over the SMSU Mustangs. Allison Nagel with 17 points for SMSU, but uh, for Sioux Falls, they have uh, a few players in double digits. Uh, JC Ulmer with 18, Laura Johnson with 11, and Lauren McKinnis with 10. Uh, both Ulmer and McKinnis coming off the bench and uh, 30 bench points for Sioux Falls overall to 14 for SMSU. Sioux Falls with 28 points in the paint to SMSU's 14, so four SMSU has gotten a few more baskets there in the paint. Right. I think the biggest surprise of the game is our player to watch, Bree Hallman. Um, they, she's usually a pretty high scorer, but they've held her to five points right now, so they're really containing our shooters. Nagel with the ball, and uh, they're going to call a away from the ball foul, I believe. That'll be on Ulmer. Hey. Only the third team foul on the Cougars. 8.30 sex left to go in the game. Sothoff gets it into Beeler. Shot up, no good. And uh, McKinnis ends up with the ball. Taking it quickly down the court, puts up a wild shot, and it rolls in. And it's been that kind of night for the Cougars. Can't really do anything wrong. 58 to 47, USF with the lead. This is not what the Mustangs want to see. They're just kind of unwinding, going downhill from here. Rolling with a nice shot, cutting the lead back down to nine. 58 to 49. Rushton with a baseline drive, and a pass kind of knocked away. Now a jump ball is going to be called. Possession arrow stays with USF. Looks like there's a little confusion out there. And they reset the shot clock. Pass inside to Ulmer. She couldn't handle it, though, and a kind of a weird shot. Rushton puts up her own shot, no good. Knocked back out. Sioux Falls really getting uh, quite a few offensive boards here. The defense for the Mustangs is just collapsing. You can see that they're exhausted. And McKinnis with a three point basket. No second chance points. Sioux Falls now with 15. And now with a 61 to 49 lead. Nagel, her shot no good. SMSU kind of uh, going cold here. And uh, what are they gonna call now? They blew the whistle. They're readjusting shot clock here, put 27 seconds down instead of 30. Guess it didn't start rolling down. Right in front of us, Laura Johnson gonna inbound the ball. Gets it into McKinnis.
SMSU trying to keep the Cougars on the perimeter. McKinnis kind of a, another good mid-range shot goes in 63 to 49. Cougars just like they did in the first half starting to pull away. 6.37 left to go. There's very little room for error now. The Mustangs are on the Eagle Rally here. And another turnover in McKinnis again, looking for some more points. Puts the shot up, no good. And Anessa Rush ends up with the ball. Trying to take it herself, and another crazy shot. And that's pretty much what the Mustangs have done all game. Pretty much throwing up an ill-advised shot and hoping to get fouled that time. She actually did get fouled. Vanessa Rush looking for her first points of the game. Yeah, they're definitely, definitely not taking the uh, shots that you'd want a team to take. But First free throw is up and good. Six minutes, 19 seconds left to go here in the game. Again, SMSU came in with a one and four record. Sioux Falls came in at three and one in, in this NSIC opener for both teams. Both free throws good, so that's 63 to 51. Ulmer over to Johnson inside a great house. Nice move, little kiss off the board and now a 65 to 51 game. Rush trying to be a little too fancy, almost lost it. Big deep three, no good. Rebounded by the Mustangs. And that is a, actually Ellen Dagler seeing her first action. Dagler part of the uh, SMSU volleyball team that uh, was able to make I believe it was their ninth straight NCAA tournament this year, but they uh, their season ended yesterday. They lost to Nebraska Kearney in four sets. Now a wide open three. That one hit nothing but a, well, I guess it maybe nicked the bottom of the net. SMSU looking to uh, get some more points. Dagler with her first bucket of the season, and now she's gonna go to the line. That's the kind of shot that the Mustangs want to see. Now Nagel going to come back in for Bonlander. Chrissy Strasburg going to come in for McInnes. McInnes, like we said, having a really good game off the bench. 17 points. Been quite a few uh, Cougars players that have been contributing. That free throw takes a a uh, home court bounce and goes in. 65 to 54, five minutes, 20 seconds left. Like you said earlier, Brett, SMSU running out of uh, time. Yeah, they really are five minutes left now. That's kind of an obvious foul. They call on Degler. Rushton gonna try to inbound it. Ulmer, or excuse me, Strasburg will take it back. Now Johnson with the ball, tries to get it inside, ball knocked away, and they're gonna give it to SMSU. Michaela Sothoff gonna come in. I was just about to say, SMSU looks out of breath, but they showed some signs of life right there. The last few years, SMSU has not had a really uh, deep team, but this year they kind of have a a few more players on the roster. Of course, it doesn't help that they're missing three players that uh, usually would see playing time. Right. Uh, another turnover on SMSU. 14 turnovers for the Mustangs, 10 for the Cougars. Rushed in with the ball. Now to Ulmer. Cougars just working the ball around the perimeter. Pass back out to Strasburg, she puts it up. Shot is no good. Johnson not able to not able to save it. I thought thought maybe they were able to get a timeout, but uh, that wasn't the case. Sixty-five to fifty-four. Sioux Falls with the lead. Four minutes twenty-two seconds left in the game. 
Time to step up here, make some big plays for the Mustangs, get us back in this game here. Mustangs having a hard time getting open. Ball into Degler. She could have kind of uh, turned around and took a shot there, but uh, they get the basket anyway, so I guess no complaints here. Rebecca rolling with a deep two. She has 12 points on the game. 65 to 56, back down to single digits. Laura Johnson, kind of a fake, faked out Nagel anyway. Goes up for the shot, rolls out. And they're gonna call a foul. And uh, that will start one and one for the Cougars. And again, Nagel with the height advantage over any other player in this game at 6-3. So there's really not any reason why uh, anybody should be out rebounding her. But uh, Johnson was able to sky over Nagel and get the rebound there. Free throw makes it a 10 point game. Now another timeout gonna be called. Three minutes, 39 seconds left. USF with a 66-56 lead. Brett, uh, based on what you've seen in this game, what do you think the Mustangs are gonna have to do to kind of get back into this game? Well, I think they're gonna have to step up on defense here. They're letting, they've been letting the Cougars go through this whole game, just getting some easy buckets. Don't wanna see that. And on offense, we're gonna have to step up here, take less wild shots, I guess you wanna say, and see if they can make something happen here. It's only five possession game, four possession game. So, want to try and make those easy lanes like Cougars are putting up against us and see if we can get ourselves back in this game, get a little momentum, get the fans back into it. Like we said, 3.39 left. The cheerleaders trying to get the fans into the game with a little t-shirt toss. Again, it is wide out night. A lot of people in the stands wearing white. So far, it hasn't really been helping uh, the women's team so much. We'll see if it helps the men. They'll be uh, taking on the Sioux Falls men's team uh, about a half hour after this game ends. And the uh, SMSU men came in with high hopes this season, so looking for a victory here tonight. It's kind of crunch time here for the SMSU women. They've been uh, close to uh, making a comeback two separate times. Each time the Cougars have pulled away. Right. I mean, you don't want the lead to get past 11, 10. You want to get it down to the single digits. Right here, there we go. Get it under 10 now, see what we can make happen. The Mustangs are gonna have to quit turning the ball over. Nagel looking for an open player. Finally gets it to rolling, now Sadhoff. Now Dagler gets the ball inside, puts it up, and that's a good start. 66 to 58 now, 315 left. Dagler now with five points on the game, her first game of the season so far. And a wide open shot, missed, and Dagler comes up with the rebound. This is exactly what I was talking about. Pressure on defense, make them take shots they don't want to take, get, try and get the rebound, or if they get their second chance points, ch second chance opportunities, excuse me, steal it back. Dagler kind of lighting up the scoreboard, getting the Mustang players going. Has seven points here in the last few minutes, and it's now back down to a 66 to 60 lead for the Cougars. Now the Mustang faithful kind of getting into this game. So uh, we'll see if we have a nail batter on our hands here. Two minutes, 42 seconds left. Only a two possession game. And again, the excitement doesn't end with this game. Men's action will be coming up in a little bit as well. Spencer Mills and Adam Hudak will have the call. It should be an exciting night. Right, like any anything can happen in basketball. Just look at some college games last night. One of the best teams in the nation, 55 game home win streak, got snapped by an un unranked team. So SMSU, I think they can come and come back and upset the Cougars here. A busy day in the world of sports. Championship Saturday in college football, big SEC championship game. Notre Dame already uh, wrapped up a 
spot in the national championship game and now home conference opener for SMSU men's and women's teams. It's kind of a busy time of year, plus it's a holiday season as the Cougar is able to get a basket 68 to 60. That's not something we wanted to see down there. We don't want to give them any more points. Two minutes now coming up on one on. Get as much time with the ball as we can. And another turnover for SMSU, and that won't help at all. It's come, coming up on two minutes left. And the Cougars will just try to milk some clock, or at least they should. Rushed in with the ball. Pass all the way across court, back to Rushton, trying to drive baseline. She lost control of it. That'll uh, really help out the Mustangs. One minute, 44 seconds left. Mustangs down by eight. Gotta think there's a sense of urgency right now. Another timeout called. We're gonna take a 30 second break this time. 68 to 60, a minute, 44 left. You're watching Mustang uh, Basketball here on KSSU TV. They say America is the land of opportunity. But today, one out of every six children lives without enough. That's nearly 13 million of us living below the poverty line, struggling every day just to hang on. This is America. Together, we can do so much. Will you help? Go to povertyusa.org today and get involved. Welcome back to the RA facility here in Marshall, Minnesota, where the University of Sioux Falls Cougars have a 68 to 60 lead over the SMSU Mustangs. A minute 44 left. And uh, as you said many times, Brett, sense of urgency is something that SMSU has to have right now. Oh, definitely. You got coming up on 90 seconds left, down by eight. With the way you've been turning the ball over. We want to make sure that doesn't happen. There's a play that we need right here. Basket and the foul. Big shot by Sodhoff. Mike, you said Brett gets the foul as well. This is what we need, the three point play. Just keep ourselves in it. Keep our, keep our uh, spirits up here. Need this free throw though. And indeed it goes in. It's now a 68 to 63 ball game. Minute and a half left. Sothoff with six points on the game. Good defense by the Mustangs. Almost a steal. Careful, don't want to foul and put the Cougars on the line. Three pointer in the corner, and that's a big shot, big make for the Cougars. That's Bailey Bauman. Junior guard out of uh, Pipestone, Minnesota, and that was a big shot. Increasing the lead back to eight, a minute and three seconds left. The Mustangs kind of uh, running out of time, try to make this comeback in danger of falling to one and five. And again, it won't get any easier from here. A lot of good uh, teams in the NSIC, and now a. Uh, you, uh, quite a few undefeated teams looking at the standings here coming into tonight uh, in the South Division, which SMSU is in. Uh, Augustana 4-0, Minnesota State Mankato 4-0, Wayne State 3-0, Winona State uh, at 6-1 in the North Division of the NSISC, Bemidji State 4-0, also Northern State 4-0 as well, St. Cloud State 4-0, and Minot State is 2-0. So uh, I know it's still early in the season. I'm not sure what the schedules have been. Probably uh, some teams maybe playing a little softer schedule than others, but uh, you see uh, a lot of teams with winning records in the conference, it's going to make for a tough schedule. Yes, it definitely won't make an easy road for the Mustangs, but like I said, anything can happen with basketball. And again, uh, the Cougars look like they might have a pretty good team as well. If they keep playing uh, the rest of the season the way they've been playing tonight, uh, last year, they went to 23 and four. So trying to build off of that success. Right. 
The play resumes. Sahoff going to have to kind of hurry down court. Minute left. Sahoff kind of caught there. Rolling, puts up a three, and it's good. 71 to 66, two possession game. Another timeout going to be called. And uh, 71 to 66, 51 seconds left. I'm uh, looking for maybe an exciting finish here. SMSU 5 of 16 from behind the arc, 31%. Sioux Falls 6 of 20 from behind the arc for 30%. And again, the Mustangs wind up to take a few more three-pointers if they want to kind of maybe send this game to overtime or get a victory. SMSU out rebounding Sioux Falls 40 to 38. Again, uh, 15 turnovers for SMSU, only 11 for Sioux Falls. Nah. What do you what do you think, Brent? Would you start fouling now, or would you try to get like a defensive stop? Well, 51 seconds left. There's a 30 second shot clock. They're gonna milk it down as far as they can. I go for a steal at first, but if you can't get it within the first 15 seconds, I think it's time to start fouling. And uh, the Cougars are 15 of 18 from the free throw line tonight for 83 percent. So they've done pretty well coming into the game this year. Uh, they were only shooting 68% from the line. So uh, Cougars are going to have to make their free throws in the next 51 seconds. The Mustangs are just going to have to make any uh, shot that they try to make. Right. And it looks like a full court man to man. Rushton gets the pass, and they're going to go right for the foul. Didn't even try for the steal. So Alyssa Rushton okay, going to go to the line. Right. I like that strategy, though. I mean, it gives you more time to work with once you get the ball back. Let's see, and maybe they don't get their full two points. Maybe they miss both. Alyssa Rushton, one of two from the line tonight. Puts that one in, though. Now with nine points on the game, two rebounds, three assists, four steals for Alyssa Rushton. Back to a six point lead. That one's good as well, so seven point lead. 46 seconds left. Sothoff and another bad pass and that might end it. Another foul. And uh, Mustangs has been the story of this game. They haven't turned the ball over as much in the second half, but it's still been a really sloppy game for the Mustangs. Right, and the bench is outscoring it. Cougars bench is outscoring the Mustangs bench 48-23. You don't want to see that. Points in the paint were being outscored 34-22. I also don't want to see that because we've had some nice opportunities to also score down there. While we have some time, let's take a look at the upcoming schedule for both teams. For uh, University of Sioux Falls, their next game will be on Friday, December 7th at 6 p.m. They will travel to Wayne State College in Wayne, Nebraska. For SMSU, their next game will be on the road on December 7th at Augustana at 6 p.m. Our next uh, broadcast for KSSU uh, basketball, or at least for the women's games, will be December 14th when the Mustangs host Minnesota State Mankato, that game will be at 6 p.m. as well. So uh, 39 seconds left. USF with a 73 to 66 lead. You see a lot of people kind of uh, filling the stands here. Right. Uh, the band playing over in the quarter, so a good atmosphere here. Just uh, trying to will the Mustang women to a victory here. I'd be interested to hear what uh Coach Kruger's talking about over there. Do you go for the twos? Try and get a quick foul, draw a foul when you're going for a two, or do you start firing threes up now with 39 seconds left, down by seven? Well, Laura Johnson is gonna start out the, at the line. She's had a pretty good game, 12 points. Uh, actually only two of 15 from the field, one of six from behind the arc, but uh, she does it. She is seven of eight from the line, so that's kind of helped out her stat total. Also 11 rebounds, so 
a double double for her, four steals and or four assists and three steals. So she's had a pretty good stat line here. Now uh, that'll make it 13 points for her. Three possession game, 74 to 66. And uh, another made free throw. So uh, Johnson, nine of 10 from the line in this game. Nine point lead. Sodhoff really needs to kind of hurry up. Mustangs letting a lot of time run off the clock. Nagel with the shot, no good. Rebounded by Rushton. And uh, 21. Does it right there. 21.8 seconds left. You said it. That'll, barring a miracle, that'll pretty much uh, seal the victory for the Cougars. Cougars will uh, move to four and one. Their first uh, victory in the NSIC this year. SMSU will fall to one and five and zero and one in conference play. First free throw, no good. Great, great house coming out. Tegan Molden coming in. Hannah Beeler going to check in as well. That free throw goes in. So now a 10 point lead. Ellen Dagger going to come out. Had a strong showing. Seven points in a span of three or four minutes in her first action of the year. Holloman trying to. Drive it, needs to kick it back out though. Mustangs going for a twos, that shot no good and they are gonna foul again. 8.1 seconds left. I was gonna say that was kind of a confusing possession for SMSU, you're down 10. Uh, you wanna go for a three pointer and yet they tried twice to go for the two point basket. Right, now you got eight seconds left for the eight. Had the ball up by 10, I don't, I see why they foul, but then again, I don't really see the point in it. Missed free throw now for Johnson. That one goes in to 77-66. And uh, Mustangs, Wild shot by Holloman, no good. And the Mustangs are gonna lose their home conference opener this year. University of Sioux Falls with the 77 to 66 victory. Mustangs tried hard to fight back, but at the end of the day, too many mistakes. They just uh, weren't able to make the comeback. But we're gonna take a, a minute break and then we will come back with the final stats and uh, just kind of a wrap up of the, of the game. You are watching Mustang basketball here on KSSU TV. Southwest Minnesota State University, where private school atmosphere meets public school cost. Programs like colonology, agronomy, and environmental science set the standard nationwide, where grad placement rates are over 97%. And the school invests in you, putting over $80 million back into the university. Southwest Minnesota State University, where you belong. If you've had a stroke, the chances are good that you could have another one. But it doesn't have to happen. You could be a stroke smart star. I'm eating healthy and I'm exercising again. I'm keeping my blood pressure and cholesterol levels under control. After 35 years, I quit smoking. I always take my medicine. If you take steps to improve your health, you'll greatly reduce your risk of another stroke. Talk to your doctor and go to stroke.org today. I'm not going to have another stroke. Welcome back to the regional events, or, excuse me, the RA facility. Still stuck in football mode this year, sorry. But uh, on the campus of uh, SMSU where the Mustangs fell to the University of Sioux Falls 77 to 66. Michael Sterling here with Brett Miller and Brett, it was kind of a tough game for the Mustangs, a lot of mistakes, and basically uh, Cougars just made more plays. Right. Um, you look at the defensive stats, USF picked off our passes 14 times in contrast to our six. That obviously had a factor to do with it. Um, we only had five more turnovers, but that proved to be crucial because 
That led to a lot of easy points for the Cougars, and Cunel they eventually Lawrence, just ran away with the game. Sailor, the uh, Mustangs were out rebounded 41 to 40. Also, as you said, 14 steals for the Cougars. 16 turnovers for SMSU, 11 for the Cougars. Uh, 40 bench points for Sioux Falls, only 23 for SMSU, 34 points in the paint for the Cougars, and 22 for the Mustangs. Sioux Falls went 21 of 26 from the free throw line for 80%. SMSU 13 of 16 for 81% from the line. Both teams kind of shot pretty much the same from the field and from a three-point arc and the free throw line. Uh, Sioux Falls' largest lead was 14, but they ended up with an 11-point victory. And uh, leading scores, Allison Nagel, 17 points for SMSU. Rebecca Rowling with 15. J.C. Ulmer with 18 led the Cougars. Warren McInnes with 17. Laura Johnson with 15. Alyssa Rushton with 11. Laura Johnson also had 11 rebounds for Sioux Falls. McKenna Greathouse with six. Allison Nagel, one rebound short of a double-double with nine rebounds. Six for Hannah Beeler. Five assists for Nagel. Four blocks for Nagel. Laura Johnson with four assists for the uh, Cougars. So like I said, Sioux Falls will move to four and one, SMSU to one and five. Our next broadcast for SMSU women's basketball will be December 14th. The Mustangs will host Minnesota State Mankato. Brett, uh, good job on tonight's broadcast, providing a lot of good insight. And uh, hopefully we'll have some more exciting games coming up throughout the season. Yeah, thank you, Michael. It was fun broadcasting with you tonight. And uh, thank you to all our camera people, everybody in the production room. Uh, we, that is, will be it for us tonight, but stay tuned. At SMSU men's basketball, they'll be taking on Sioux Falls tonight as well. Hopefully uh, they will be able to get a victory tonight. Spencer Mills, Adam Hudak will have the call. But for Brett and uh, for everybody else in the production room and for me, myself, Michael Sterling, uh, thank you for tuning in to SMSU women's basketball. Stay tuned. In a little while, we'll have men's basketball here on KSSU-TV. Stay tuned.